Good to get some coffee. Okay, well, I just got my up. Uh, uh. Yep. Hi, my name is Nadine No, and we are here on a wonderful Sunday for all those that celebrate, uh, what is it, the Lunar New Year celebration. Uh, Happy New Year to you. I only know it in Chinese. Gong hei fak choi. So uh, I believe it's the year of the rabbit. So thank you for, for joining us today. We are getting our coffee, teas, waters, whatnot. Um, if you've never seen us here before, um, this is Let's Paint and Draw Along. It's folks getting together and and we are guided by coach and instructor Don Stevens from Don Stevens Art. If you wanted to draw along with us, yeah. Um, I can put a link to the photo, um, which is on Google Drive that you can download. Uh, you let me know if you want it, I'll pop that in there and you can see what we're referencing. Other than that, this is a community of artists, young and older, uh, novices, beginners, to wherever you are, maverick wise. Um, but we're, we're just here to get our art on, absolutely. And totally inspired by the amazing Don Stevens. Good morning, Don, how you doing today? Hey, good morning, Nadine. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, you're the yeah. rabbit. Time to get the running and moving and diving in the holes, going down the rabbit hole. Let's do it. Mm. You know it. Good morning. I know I sound a bit lively, but I had the coffee with the baking soda in it this morning, so I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, baking baking soda. soda. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you put a pinch of baking soda in. Put it in online. Do a Google search. Baking soda in your coffee. Baking soda in water. A pinch. What it does is it helps. It supposedly, I can't, you know, say exactly it works with me, but you, you can check it for yourself. It supposedly helps with your heart, uh, helps with your liver, helps with your intestines, you know, helps with your stomach. To, to balance the ashes in your stomach and things like that. So check out everybody. You know, I'm not a doctor, I'm a herbal, I'm a herbal guy you on tree bar. Nobody laughed at that. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I was getting a little bit of um a looping, so I'm gonna put my headsets on. Oh, okay. But you get what I'm saying, Miss Paulette? Well, yeah. Some like health benefits, and I like that. Yeah, just a pinch. You don't need a spoonful or nothing like that. You'll be you'll be foaming at the mouth if you did a spoonful. I did that idiot thing, so it, it almost acts like soap in your mouth when it does that in your mouth or foam up. So, so it's just a pinch. You know what I mean? If you got one of those scoopers that says a pinch on there. Just make sure you put a blue in there and then you, you level it off off the top, knock off the residue, and then put the pinch in and see how you uh, uh, react to it. And it, it's, it won't bother you. What most of the do is it's going to make you alleviate gases from the system right away within the first five minutes. And you may have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, it'll make you regular. Oh, well, you know what? Okay. Process with other things too as well. So yeah. I've heard others say how it reacted in them. I can't say specifically how it's going to act in every individual. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to have somebody have a, a situation because I misinformed them. So mm -hmm. what I would say is try the pinch, see what happens. Talk to your doctor. Ask your doctor if you have a doctor and you're taking a multitude of medicines. Hey, if I take a pinch of baking soda in my coffee, Will that bother my medicine package? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm a big advocate of that because a lot of people want to do these type of things, but they don't realize if you're taking certain medicines already, your body is like a science project now. You add something else, you don't know what the reaction may be with the other stuff that you're uh, dealing with. So, mm -hmm. navigate a hey, go to your doctor, whomever that is, 
ask them, you know what I mean? Or ask a professional, take your medical package with you when you go to talk to that medical professional and say, hey, I would like the, the benefits of a pinch of baking soda uh, in my coffee or something. Will that bother anything? Here's the mm -hmm. medicines to deal with. And that's with anything, everybody. If you're trying to go the herbal way and stuff like that, because I know I talk about turmeric, ginger, and all this good stuff, but the realistic aspect of it, everybody, is this, is that you have to really, if you have a medical package or you should go to your medical professional and have conversations. Mm -hmm. Because that will help you out. Certain medicines react to green leafy vegetables. Some medicines react to when you start doing smoothies with pineapples and stuff, you'll start having reactions and not realize what's going on because of your medicine package. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't want everybody that's listening along with us and, and Ms. Paulette and our 175 people to be misinformed and think that Don is saying, oh, I'm an herbalist and you should, no, no, no. I'm saying as a concerned person, uh, being on the planet, concerned citizen of the the populace that we're in, hey, if you want to change like that or you want to add things in, don't forget about talking to your doctor. Mm -hmm. And that's the ultimate of it if you do. If you don't, then go to somebody that's a professional and start asking questions. Right. Especially if you're not the type that likes to read and research because it can get kind of rough trying to read medical words and understand these last derivatives. So, I understand. I have the same difficulty too, ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. out there, and to my lady today. So yeah, yeah. Just make sure, you know, when you try something, try it slow first, because with the herbals, it's gonna take some time. You gotta be persistent. So you gotta do it a couple of times and keep a regimen going, then now you start keeping the benefits from it. But you're gonna mm -hmm. use the bathroom, all right? <laughs> so, yeah. Be prepared. Yeah. That's the Everybody works, you know. Everybody wants to evade that aspect of it. A lot of people don't like to sweat. A lot of people don't like to urinate. A lot of people don't like to defecate. These are the three mm -hmm. things that keep moving and running. So I don't be understanding when people say they don't like doing these things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you yeah. know, freeze when it happens. <laughs> you got a time those things you could be at home. Yeah. Oh yeah, I understand that, Miss Paulette. But you know person has a certain biorhythm and all I say is get in touch with your biorhythm, whatever it is and balance yourself that way and just be observant. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. But yeah, baking soda does work though and all you need is a pinch. That's all you need. Well, thank you for today's health tip. <laughs> yeah. Hey, all right. You can new corner, Paulette. All right. I mean, uh, the artist speaking points on health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that was Nadina chopped that down. Nadina chopped that down. <laughs> oh, we live, honey. We live. I know. That's why I'm having fun, you guys. Sunday morning, you know, I wanted to show the Martin piece that I did live. A lot of people like that one. So I wanted to show the digital group that some of you, if you haven't seen it, this is it's the one beautiful. that I did live about a week ago. Mm hmm. So, you know, and it's the same thing, everybody. If you start using that 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 graphite, man, you can have a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing a couple of more of these, you guys, and posting them to our page so we can build up confidence more and get people to, to mingle and participate. But, you know, just look at what graphite can offer you. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's not really done yet, but a lot of people think I'm done. But it's not done yet because there's still some darks that can be placed in there to really get descriptive on the surface. Well, and that said, mm -hmm. what were you about to say? Art supply, some more, some graphite pencils, and some cartoon, uh, from Michael. Yeah, now, I'm using it right now. The two B is that the one you always talk about using? It's more say like the uh, tortillion, I mean the um graphite pencil. This is a two B. Is this the one you always yeah. talk about? You mean the silvery aspect, the way it spreads on the surface, we call that? Yeah, yeah it does well, have that. 
Yeah, that's what that is. That's the difference. And all your working pencils now, your number two pencils, the business pencils and stuff, all of them are either HB or 2B um, graphite material inside of them. Then you have to get an art store now. You got to get lead from a speciality store. You may be able to get a lead pencil. Uh, no, I don't think they do them at Home Depot and Lowe's. So you definitely would have to get that at an art supplier and have oh, a yeah. it for. Yeah, I did. I went to Michael's uh, Thursday and bought a couple of more things uh, to add to my collection. One was this, two of these pencils and then some tortillion. Yeah. Did you get a bag of tortillion? What type of deal did they have for you, the store you went to? Yeah, I got a bag. You got a bag? Cool, cool. Now you get to understand and have fun with those too. I would say, Miss Paulette, get some Ziploc bags and put a couple for charcoal and then put a couple for graphite to separate them. Okay. Okay, and then get you some Ziploc bags, some sandwich bags, and you can put them in there. And okay. then this way you can the bag with your Sharpie marker, what they are for when so down now. When you do graphite, you won't be mixing the charcoal with the graphite. You see what I'm saying? Not like one, two, one. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. That's what formulates that type of separation. Okay. And then you can, I'm not saying that you can't put them together. It's just that you want to see how they both work separately before you start fusing them together. I'm an advocate of that, you guys. See what certain things look like by themselves when you're working with it. Then when you get an understanding of it working by itself, now you can fuse it with other things because you understand that particular material by your hand. So I'm really a big advocate of, of understanding your materials. You can ask anybody, all the way to the new little guys I got on the weekends now, uh, doing um, uh, doing uh, books and books and books. That's what I'm doing with people. Yo, wait till you guys see the pictures of these little guys. Man, they are hyper. I didn't realize kids would be as hyper as me first thing in the morning. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They was like looking at me like, you're not like the other adults. And the kid asked me, I said, well, what do you mean? He said, you're bright-eyed and you're red and you're all this other stuff. I was like, you're right. Yes, I am. <laughs> So it's just funny to see kids react to you in that way, you know. So you see the piece up, everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to get the full up now. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm put the black and white version up for me to look at, and then I also can see the color version too as well. So what you want to do, you guys, is today we're gonna be trying to fertilize some edges and finish up. So as you can see, we're pretty much close to the finish line. It's just that this back panel and the tail underneath and here, and probably one or two, you know, eraser marks here and there. I'm happy with my face. What about you guys? Are you happy with the, the face of, of our homie here? Richard DeGray? Getting there. Yeah. Okay. See, that's the first thing. You want to feel comfortable with what you've done. You can't compare it to other things and other people, okay? I, I don't do that with my own artwork because it's going to be what it's going to be. Yeah, sure, you, you may not come close enough to, to how would you say, catching with you, but as long as you show us that it's a dog on the surface, you won. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what, that's what a lot of people have to start understanding, and that's what how would you say stretches out a lot of people? Because when everybody comes from the workforce, yeah, I'm gonna preach a little bit this morning. When everybody comes from the workforce, everybody, uh, how would you say, the stain of of mm -hmm. right and wrong on you so deep that you can't really enjoy retirement. Mm -hmm. so, one of the areas when you come and you're doing artwork, this helps you to get out of that mode. I've noticed how I'm able to help. A lot of people, when I do the, uh, the elder centers, each week they come in, they seem more and more relaxed with the idea of saying, you know what, I don't have to be in control of everything. I only have to be in control of myself to be happy with my production. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
response. I must be on the wrong toes again. Darn it, Nadine. No. What? No, I'm getting Uh-oh. my pink eraser. Because uh, right. You know, that's what you want. Just concentrating, you just concentrating on the work. You know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I'll be talking like that, too, to try to break that. That because we all go there. Honestly, if you're in a space by yourself and you start doing something, you're gonna, you're gonna, how would you say everything around you is gonna disappear? Mm-hmm. That's what starts to happen. But since we're on this group thing, that's why I keep on trying to throw these corny jokes and everything out there. Yeah. <laughs> Little tidbits to bring you back. <laughs> pull you back I, in, please. Say again. Yeah, you're trying to pull us back in because we, you know, we could go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, we're, we're in rabbit season now. This is Bugs Bunny and everything. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have fun now, man. This is really fun time. So if you look at the, the back here, I know you probably can't see it in here because it looks kind of white here. But in person, you would see some of the eraser marks that I have. Let me see if I can come a little closer. A little closer. How's that look, Nadine? Can you see where my hand is here? Yes. Oh, you can? Okay. Can you see that the, the eraser marks in there? Because I'm not looking at the other side of the camera. I'm yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So if you can see those eraser marks, you can see if we talk about tonality, it's probably like a percent vibration here. You see mm-hmm. everybody? And then we erase through to show the high points, which is the highlights of the scene on it on Richard's body from the light, from Nadine taking a flash or whatever was happening with the light in the room on that day, you see? So then what we wanna do is we, we can work in between those, but we wanna make a pattern that's coming close to the photograph. So living in a digital era is fun. So everybody, if you got the photo on your end, cause we don't wanna put this pressure on Nadine She's trying to do work. She's trying to keep us flowing and everything. So. If you have the photograph on your side, zoom in to the backpack of Richard in the photo mm-hmm. so that you can see the direction of the fur. His fur is moving down and across his leg because it's coming from his nose. If you look, if it's coming from his nose, everything, remember, it goes away from the nose, everybody. And the fur is going down away from the neck. When you get on the side, it, depending upon his position, the fur will look like it's diagonal on his leg, but it's really going down his leg, you see? So let's get it in work, everybody. So what I see is, let me look at this photograph. So on my end, everybody, what I'm seeing is there's a darkness underneath here with some of the fur going and flipping out. This is the way now that you want to, you know, get in there and, and show us different movements of the darkness, working between some of the lights. You got. Don't want to really reconstruct, but what we want to do is, is act that fur movement in there. Whatever, whatever mark you decided to use to make us believe fur, now you're just going to be going fur crazy. You know, light touches like this. You see what's happening in this area, everybody, where I work in between mm-hmm. the uh, the white mark that I made with the eraser. Notice mm-hmm. how down here it's harder to make it darker because it's a shadow on Richard's back panel right in between the, the part of his leg and the upper part is he has a dark area there. Now, it's not black dark, but if you look at it in the color, it's a brown dark. If you have it in black or like a, like a, I would say it's about in between 40 to 60 percent vibration or value or dark. So I wouldn't, and then remember, everybody, just because we say on here 40, 50 percent things like that, it's always a battle to see these values. It's always a battle to see the intensity of colors. It's always a battle to see values and tones. Because maybe, because of your particular situation, you may see more, you may see less. I don't know. We all don't know. Miss Paulette, because of your glasses, I don't know. You may see certain tones. I may, I may not see them. I don't know. 
we all see tunes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So then that's the whole thing. How are we going to control that to be able to get closer to what we're seeing naturally? That's all. You're just trying to fool the eye. And you see now how I got the quotillion and I'm coming back and moving in the same direction. And now when we're working in between in those lights, now that first to start coming out, you see? And if you're moving in that same direction, you're not trying to move and do it all over evenly now. You're working in between those eraser marks that you made to show us the high point. And then now you start in there because it's not like you're not going to come back to reestablish some things once you get some tones in there. You see, this only works if you get some dirt on a page. You got to get dirty. Real dirty, everybody. And all our artists that are, that are knowing of the material, they know too if they're on the other side. They say, yeah, you got to get that stuff on there if you want that eraser to work. Because that's why a lot of times I say the um, if you try to use the white chalk in here now, it seems like it's not working. It's like, no, it's working. It's just that that's white paper. So for me, I like to use the white chalk on colored paper, black, gray, brown, charcoal brown, uh, tan, like the, how the newsprint in the field where the chalk can have interplay too. And then everybody, we just snatching from our old school masters at you see. So you see how it's starting to develop everybody? Yeah, it's starting to develop pretty good. Okay, I can see now. Yeah, that's where we want to be. Yeah. Because now look, underneath here, everybody, I don't know if you notice, Richard is sitting on his uh, right side paw, which would be left side to us. See that underneath here? If you mm -hmm. zoomed in, Mary, on the photograph, as I am, you'll see, you'll see the bottom pads of his feet, of his mm -hmm. paw on the right side underneath. And, and once you see it, it's three little, and what I would do is I would come in and make it a little darker now in certain areas, right? Mm -hmm. Now, look, you can use a number two, or you can use the small erasers, Another thing you can do is you can cut up an eraser if you needed to. I do that a lot sometimes too. So this time I'm just going to use uh, like a business pencil. I used to go to Burlington County College. So I had got a whole bunch of pencils from BCC College. So all of these pencils have a little eraser on the top. Uh, and I, what I do a lot of times, I use that little eraser right on the tip there. Mm -hmm. So then what you do is go in here and now I'm going to cut out where his paw is, right underneath where that, that pad is. You see how I did that, Nadine? Let's go mm -hmm. right in there. Cut right in there. Erase right in the same area. Don't move until you see the white of the page. And as soon as you see it, you can see how that's going to look out underneath there, the witch's paw. See how I did that, everybody? It's right underneath the pads there. As soon as I erase underneath of the paw, that made that pad of his foot out even more. That goes back to one of our earlier videos, everybody, where we where we explained how if you surround a, a darker area with a light, you make the darker area more intense. If I do the vice versa and, and, and how would you say surround an area by a certain degree of darkness, it makes the lights jump out more. See that? Yeah. Yeah, Don, I see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But then now you can have some fun being a little bit more descriptive with the fur underneath there. You see, working in and around where you had the light areas in there, showing where the underneath of the belly is in there, you see, showing where that darkness happens and then all of a sudden his body touches the table. Bang. And you can show some of the darkness is going up the arm here in between those eraser marks that you made. See, it's important to know the subtractive idea in there. The subtractive idea is uh, the eraser the surface that you made to make us believe texture. You know? 
the more you do it, the more you get connected to it, the more you look for it and you train your eye, you can see it more. Okay, Miss Paulette, it's not like you're going to see it the first time around. You may see it, you may not. And it'll fool your eye, but it'll make you smile and tingle all over when you get it by yourself, honestly. <laughs> No, because and you're the first person that you have to fool to believe the effect. If you can believe the effect, you know half your audience behind whoever they are, they're going to believe it. So, not unless they're aliens and they have another eye somewhere. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all can stop me from cracking these corny jokes, man. <laughs> I'm having a ball. These corny jokes, man. Oh, yeah. I hope the video is showing I'm having too much fun, man. I guess that's what it means to get aged with wine, I guess. I don't know. I'm just going to go with it. It's, it's me. I'm there. Yeah. But that's what yeah. we do every, every Sunday morning, man. You never know yeah. what's going to happen, you know? True that. Uh, next week, in Dean, that may be cracking the jokes. Maybe yeah. me. It's Paulette that's going to crack the jokes like one time we had. She was going, boy. Yeah. yeah. All right. The part, everybody, the foot here, the bottom leg, just like we did with the front one there, just like we did with the front paw here, we expanded it because of the, the fur. The same thing you're going to have to do with this back one here. You see, so now... I would scroll down in my photograph if you have it on the other side with you. Scroll down to where that foot is and then really look at it and see how you can expand it from here. So what I would do, I would go around and show some of the dark area where I'm going to expand this first and then I would come back with my eraser and erase out some of these lights that I'm seeing but identify them like oh, so. Let me see. You see what I'm doing in there close with the pencil around the leg? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks, Nadine. You see, all we do is start that same curving idea that we're doing to show how Richie's hair is curling. So then I, I make that line going around to say how much more thicker I'm going to make it. See? So then now I can come back with that same eraser that we was at earlier. I clean it off with all of our sandpaper. Remember, everybody, mm -hmm. sandpaper to write your sandpaper off with. Or you can use your cloth. That's why I suggest to everybody, wear your old clothes or have an old cloth or old T-shirt would be better. That's Laying next to you, you can wipe your eraser off. I wipe my eraser off on my pants, everybody. And you see that light part there? Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to achieve so you can have good connection to the surface. Same thing with the pencil. I used this pencil already, but you can see how I wiped them off on my pants. And now we have a cleaner spot for better connection. So now with that being said, now I can go in here, really scrub. And that's the same direction. Scrub, same direction. Notice how it starts to break apart in there. And now we start to feel that fur the way it's curling down over the tabletop for Richard. You see, look, see how I'm moving in there? I'm just mm -hmm. scratching it away. Really, what they call scraffito, ripping into the surface, tearing it up. Yeah, ripping it back down. You see everybody? So then this way, I'm trying to match the fur quality, the quality that I made in the front. I'm matching that with the same stroke, the same idea of a stroke, rather, the same movement the same manipulation of the material. You see, understanding how it's on the surface, everybody, and how we're doing. Uh-oh. Oh, everybody, I'm sorry. Oh. You got your neighbors? I separated the phone from the other device, so now if I get a phone call, it won't bother oh. everything. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, we on the internet, man. I'm doing my pop-up Sunday class. Me and Nadine O are doing it right now, man. So if you could, you can go on Facebook and check it out. I won't put you on the spot now, now. I done got fancy enough I can separate the phone from the device recording, cousin. You're in trouble. Yep, yep. 
All right, don't worry about it. We'll be on till about 12 o'clock, 12 15. Okay, then I'll just do a topic. All right, bet that. Yeah. All right, you heard Nadine. Yeah. Live. You already yeah. said you were going to tap in. So now you're going to be recorded, homie. You better tap in, boy. Hey, boy. <laughs> All right, cuz, love you, man. All right. Uh, that's what's up. Yeah, you see, that's what I wanted to start doing, Nadine. Somebody uh -huh. wants to call me, open oh, call me. We gonna put you on the spot. You know what I mean? I might yeah. even put one or two collectors on there and put them on the spot. Uh -huh. They bold enough to call uh -huh. Sunday morning. Say what? You gonna call me Sunday morning about this matter? I'm bringing they, you to they, the family. They're deep. You know, look at Miss Paul. At Miss Paul, what you tell them to do? You know what I mean? <laughs> You see, but dog, uh, let's start having more fun every day. If you see how we work live, this is what we do. You know what I mean? Make everything work, and then we go back to talking about the art. Because if yeah. you look at those original marks that I made, and you come back, and you just enhance them just a little bit, you don't have to work it real hard. You see? Mm -hmm. So even though we admire Miss Paulette's earlier work, and when she's working, you can hear her scratching and everything. That's mm -hmm. earlier on, Miss Paulette. Now, when you get to this aspect of the drawing, when you're trying to take everything to the finish line, your your marks are going to be less. It's just going to be little touches here and there. You see, because the decision has already been made. I'm not reconstructing anything. This is what it is. We're going to take this to the finish. Line. And then now, if I don't get it on this one, I'll get it on the next one. That's how we work repertoire. See? And then the more and more we work around that, you know, look at the edge. And if you look at the edge in the photograph, you'll see how you have a little bit of curls and things right around the edges here. Mm -hmm. That's Richard's fur and how puffy he is, how much he, the air was starting to dry him out before he went outside and rolled around grass like they all like to do. So yeah, you see right in here, going with that same idea, you want to use that stroke that you made up to make us believe Richard's fur. Your stroke and my stroke is not going to be the same. Why? Because my hand is not your hand, everybody. Mm -hmm. Not because, oh, I'm so much better than you. Or, oh, this is, no, that, it, all of that. <laughs> the main reason is because my hand is not Nadine's hand. Nadine's hand is not with Paulette's hand, and so on and so forth. All mm -hmm. we can give a suggestion of movement, and now you're working on your hand to make a specific move. Now, for some of you that may have arthritis out there or hand issues, that's why I bring that up too. Something in my mind told me to say that because I deal with people that the center that have that issue or they may have had a stroke and the hand freezes up in certain positions like this, everybody, mm -hmm. you know? So what I, I get people to put that pencil right there. You see, instead of working upright, they would work flat. So it's always a way to do this, to make a mark. And you'll be shocked because if you look at videos of people that done this with their mouths, these people, they didn't have hands and stuff, check out those people. You know, I played a video for a couple of elders like that, and they were shocked that these people, and it was one that was from Philadelphia, a young lady that was from Philadelphia, that was changing the baby's pampers and everything with her feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Then did paintings. Another one was playing an instrument with their feet. So it's like, if you want motivation, that can't be, that. Ha like, if that's not motivating to you, I don't know what is, man. You see somebody with uh, no arms and they're painting with their lips and their mouth. And then mm -hmm. when you look at the painting, because I had a calendar uh, full of it, and it's mm -hmm. amazing. Nah, they didn't do that with their mouth. Like I'm looking at the picture, I'm like, no, they didn't. That's a lie. Somebody's lying. Then you go to YouTube and look at the videos on these individuals, and they show you their demons, their, their, when they're painting, right with their mouth, mixing and doing all the things that we were doing. One guy was using his uh, like a stick in his mouth, to do charcoal drawings. Oh, man. So, you know, if that's not motivating to all our retirees out there, I don't know what is at that point. I hear you. you know? 
And, and what, what, what about the young kids? I know you, you work with some, you work with a number of uh, younger, like teens, preteens. Yeah. Well, with those guys, I got two sets now. On Saturdays oh. now, I'm doing a comic strip. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, comic nice. strip class for Saturdays for both age groups. And um, during the week, I still do those Thursday classes and Tuesday classes. And they're all at Abington right now. That's one of the places that's, you know, focusing in on that type of idea of art for the community and servicing the young kids. So, you know, I've always had a disposition for that. And we, we're having fun. I'm doing them stuff like this because I know they're not getting this when they're doing cartooning now. But that's the difference between Japanimation and anime, the new forms of cartooning from overseas that's why they're beating up on our scene because we're not retraining our artists to go back to looking at nature again to configure their ideas about a character or a mm -hmm. scene of a you see they're depending upon trying to use the digital world and say oh okay i can do it that way well my idea or my suggestion is and a lot of the kids are loving it is that you have to go out there and look and mm -hmm. look at these this environment and then translate it in your own cartoon way. Mm. So then this way, when you do that now, it's, it's more livelier. Like I bring up Brother Man comics, you know, because mm -hmm. he was Billy. So, you know what I mean? I bring up his comic book and how he works and I show some of his samples. And then mm -hmm. I show Marvel book uh, uh, samples and stuff. But then I go all the way back to Betty and Fritz the Cat. Yeah. Those yeah. Those comic strips was based upon what? Basic shapes and the movement of basic shapes to make you laugh. So in the beginning of the course, I show them how to do that. From doodling first, you know, just doodling, looking at edges, looking around you, and then now taking the shapes and making them move and do things. Mm -hmm. And then now the next, that was the first class, or so now the second class, we'll move into more symbolism to understand how edges make an alphabet or make language and stuff like this. So we'll mm -hmm. go all the way back to the Sumerian text and the uh, uh, pharaonic like, like that, and we'll talk about cartouches and how pictographs were made and what pictographs are, just the earlier comic books. Mm -hmm. So then we show them from that, but then you get to make basic figures move, sit down and all this good stuff, just using basic shapes. And then the third class, we go into more tonality then, showing them how to use light, like how we're doing now, mm -hmm. or to even color. And now, it's, I know it sounds like a lot, but when you're talking to a certain community of individuals, you don't talk above them, you talk right where they're at. Mm -hmm. so if, if I did the video in the classroom with them, y'all would be like, wow, Don sounds like Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But then when I'm talking to the older ones, you'd be like, wow, he sounds like a real guidance counselor in the arts. Mm -hmm. And then when I talk to you guys, the adults, it's totally different. He's a jokester. He's, he likes to talk about story too much. Oh, my God. But you know what I'm saying? Formulate that modality for each one so that when mm -hmm. we're here on pop-up, it's certain other things that we're catering to in the pop-up. Then when I'm in the classroom, or I'm in a private room. Like I even do the kids that are better that home trained. I, mm -hmm. I, I've been lucky enough to get some of them online where I handle their art uh, uh, requirements for the state. Oh, cool. Yeah, that, that's an easy one. You know, all you're doing is doing the same thing we're doing, but it's specific to the child at that point. That's all. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sitting here and he may hear you may have music in the background and the kid educates me to new music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I got one kid, he was showing me about the new jazz guys because he plays piano. Mm -hmm. oh, Don, you got to listen to this guy and that guy and this guy. And you'll be shocked, man, if you talk to that younger crowd, man. You'll be amazed. What is what is it, What do they say? Isn't there a saying out there that uh, the, the wonders that come from babes or the things that you can learn from the babies or mm -hmm. I forget what the line Guys, you can help me out if you know it, but it's along yeah. those lines that they get from that innocence, uh, right. that innocence of observation. Right. It's called out the mouth of things. Say again, Miss Paulette. 
outer mouth of babe. Yo, okay. Yeah. Honestly, you'll be shocked. I, I, yeah. They shocked all yeah. yesterday. It was funny. They'll say, say some stuff. I tell you, they show sure enough don't have no filter. <laughs> Well, see, yeah, see, that's the type of child I was, but you know, with the with the rulership of the sixties and seventies over time, you you you're not able to express the way that they are. Now, I don't agree with the way they're expressing. I, I agree with you, Miss Paul, that they they can be a little bit ornery now. You know what I mean? Way more than what I was when I was a child, because we knew uh, certain traditions were in us that you was was uh, how would you say what what's the other line? You're you're heard or you're seen but not heard. Mm -hmm. That's how I was raised. Right, you're like you you. It was a time for you to speak, and then there was a time for you to be quiet. And then if you wasn't quiet or wasn't listening, the, the reprimand would come down. Now mm -hmm. you know everybody the different reprimands, but I'm just saying you know the deal. If you grew up, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s. First half of the 80s, you understand that idea. Because mm -hmm. now when you get, see, that's why I left the K through 12 arena and teaching because I, I watched and I noticed in the early 2000s, late 90s, how they were suggesting that children get the right to debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so me coming from a latchkey society where my mom may have worked 12 or 16 hours, that's a death sentence if they come home and you start debating whether or not you should watch the dishes. Yeah. I was totally against that. And that's the era that we in now. And I can I can really tell you because I was in there and that's why I left it because I was in disagreement with it. A child shouldn't, you can talk to your parent, but you don't debate your parent. Yeah, exactly. Well, arguing with your parent, who are you? See, they don't say they, 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 when we say they, they, they debate mm -hmm. all the words that go around debate that's what they're associating children with now it's not mm -hmm. an argument it's debate I'm, I'm voicing my opinion I have the right to do so that's mm -hmm. them on I said to them when I was in there I said hey if you want to live longer I don't suggest you do that. <laughs> I suggest you do that when you see a smile on their face. You know, right around when an adult is eating, they're more mm -hmm. open to debates then. <laughs> so I was teaching the kids, you do that during dinner time. But see, the tradition is pulled away now because you're not, you don't sit and eat in a group anymore. You run off to your section and you go and eat your, 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 your spoils. Mm -hmm. You don't really sit at the table and, okay, how you feeling? What you went through today? Oh, don't you start that. And all of those conversations you would have over a meal. I know me and my mom, it was only us. And that's what would happen. We'd be at the little table in the kitchen looking like a um, Henry Osawa Tanner, you know what I mean, uh, piece. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? She'd be sitting on one side, sitting on the other, and we talking about, you know, what she did at work, and then I'm talking about what I had to do in school and everything else, and she's saying, hey, you didn't make me look bad. And, you know, all these conversations go down during that time. So I noticed that, you know, the school systems were not doing it. And the reason why I understood it a little bit more because I was in the behavioral sciences, everybody. Mm -hmm. So so you're seeing adjudicated youths, you're seeing kids that are supposedly behavioral challenged. And you're going to tell that crowd to debate a parent. <laughs> no. So if they're telling that crowd, I can only imagine what they were telling the kids in the regular public school system classes, what they were getting. And then when I substitute teaching in those matters, I got to see it. I'm one of those. I like to see things. You know what I mean? Like, is that really happening? And then you get in there and you see and you go, oh, man, it really is. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's worse than what I thought. You know what I mean? And that's what generally happens. So I wanted to get out here and do what I'm doing now, privately with people, groups, uh, being more hands-on. So then this way we can have more of a, a, a real debate then. Like with mm -hmm. the kids in the classroom, I debate them all the time. They say mm -hmm. certain things that are so erroneous. You'd be like, oh my God, who is telling this stuff? You realize they have the energy. 
So they're able to look and understand certain words. So, and more I just asked them at the end, did you learn anything new? And I'll let you know from uh, 7.9 years old all the way up to 16.9 years old. That's the way they show it on the roster, everybody. It's, mm -hmm. I, I, it's just a reason the new things we do, you guys. So I didn't know you had a 0. 0.9 or 0. 0.8 on your age, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Too funny to me. Man. It's starting to generally happen now from that movement that we're doing, everybody. I know that was a lot of conversation we had, everybody. It seems like it had nothing to do with what we're doing, but it does because you should be able to, you know, do your work and have conversation. You'll mm -hmm. have your time with be more private with it. You know what I mean? And go into a trance like how Miss Paulette was earlier and how Nadine was earlier. You know what I mean? You, you almost throw yourself into a self-proclaimed trance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, all this stuff is proven too. This is the art therapy aspect, everybody. I was in that arena too. I just didn't get the certification because I didn't see the sense in it if people are willing to hire you because there's so much of that work out there to connect with beings. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the, the new job is how do you deal with other human beings now? <laughs> You know, I'll put it to you this way, you guys. I, I got an opportunity online to take advantage of that uh, professional friend thing online, whereas you go to this group and you, you, uh, you'll you have people that will call you just to talk. And oh, wow. y'all all know who likes to talk. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's right. I'm done. Allie, all you want to do is talk, buddy, while I do Go my down the rabbit hole. Oh, man. Well, well, a lot of times it's not even that. We may talk sports. They okay. may update me or whatever. See, you're, it's not like it's a date because it's male and female. You're just being a professional friend. You're just oh, listening and okay. you're learning. It's not like you're sitting there and they can get an AI technology to do that for them. But the right. real thing about it is, is that I'm really listening and responding truly to what mm -hmm. they're saying. Not like mm -hmm. I'm just going, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm interjecting with things like how we do here. But you have opportunities if you're a person that likes to talk to people like that. And it's mm -hmm. not a lot of times, it's not about like how you're thinking. Some people may be thinking, oh, I'm talking somebody down from killing themselves. No, mainly it's a lot of people that they may have so many things that they're doing, they don't, you know, look at having friends. Mm -hmm. You'll be shocked if there's some people, uh, they just, don't want to talk to people because they feel better talking through the computer. It's it's funny like that, but this is where we're at. So if you're mm -hmm. a person like me that likes to talk a lot, perfect job for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I had one person tell me they had that. All right, Don, I, I got to go. I was like, wow, this is strange. So I got a person that wanted a professional friend to talk asking me. <laughs> Well, I think uh, I'm ready to go now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what does that say about Don? I can out talk somebody that does, yeah. that wants to hear talking. Now I don't talk them so much. They don't want no more. I, I don't want it anymore. It's okay. I got to go. <laughs> it's like I got my fix. I'm, uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I found that so amusing, you guys. I was like, wow, I out talked somebody that wanted to hear somebody talk. Wow. It's amazing. So, yeah. Now, if you look, now, if you're looking at the screen, you can see now. See how that expanded more? Now, if I expand out on it, if I pull out on it a little bit, you can see it all work together now. You see? And there we go. How's that looking, everybody? Looking good. You see that? Okay. So you see now how that little bit of work that we did over here to develop mm -hmm. the thigh, the hind mm -hmm. quarter, now, now that makes this even more intense when we look across. Mm -hmm. So your feet should be feeling the same way, not looking the same way, feeling the same way, especially if you put the directional forces in that we talked about it. Keep moving in when you're adding or subtracting, which is with the eraser. 
Adding with the charcoal, subtracting with the eraser. Mm -hmm. You need to move everything in the same direction because when you do that, that'll fool your viewing audience, whomever it is, even on video, it works. To the point where that Martin Luther King that I put up, uh, mm -hmm. I put the facial recognition and it didn't look for Martin Luther King, but it asked for what person this is. Mm -hmm. So like anytime you want a human, uh, a picture of somebody human, and you want to know if you really got it, put it on facial recognition on, on any one of your platforms and see if the system will ask you if that's a real person. Mm -hmm. Once it does it, smile, you've done it. Well, we do the same thing with animals. So unfortunately, we have to just go with what we're doing. And then we just compare and contrast and look at the photograph. And if we got the overall character of the dog or the animal or feline at that time, then we've done our job. The other part is, is if somebody says to you, oh, that's a dog, but you know, you know, what's wrong with this and what's wrong with that? Then you don't really worry about that person. As long as they said the word, they may not have said Richard, right? But right. as long as they dog. Now, if they say poodle or terrier, right, then now you know you went way above 50% in mm -hmm. their eye, no matter what they're saying. You know, I think a lot of times people key in on the like and dislike too much and not the other discord in somebody's response to. Mm -hmm. but they're really telling you, you did what you need to do, but me personally, I don't like what you did. Mm -hmm. so the way you conquer that as a suggestion from me to everybody out there my whole 175 uh 175 people that we got nadine we're not mm -hmm. going to stress those they be constipated on the day if they say dog if they say poodle terrier anything within that canine family toy poodle uh -huh. uh -huh. if they say anything you know you did over 75% of the work that you needed to do. Right. And what you learn from that experience, you take that and put that in your toolbox because you know your hand can move it. You know your hand and I can make those movements. These are not just exclusive for a dog. Mm -hmm. You can do a horse, uh, gorillas, um, any type of animal. You're going to be working with that. Say, for instance, you, I can take this area right here, and that would be somebody's beard today. Mm -hmm. Using the same movement, the same curve. So you're going to be using certain textual movements that you make up. You got to put those in your memory bank, the noodle, or put them in your toolbox. Sometimes what I tell people to do is take a piece of paper, tear it off, and do certain marks that you know to do. Mm -hmm. And then now you keep it on a board or tap it on a wall. So every time you look up at it, you, you know your strokes. You mm -hmm. know your strokes that you're going to use, and then you'll feel more free to use them like how I use them and how other artists use theirs. Because nobody does the same movement. We do just really the same type of movement, mm -hmm. but this movement here is not going to be the same as Rembrandt's. The minute that I realize that, the minute I realize that, I know I'm good. That's when you really know perfection doesn't exist in that way. Let's say it that way, everybody. Because I had a long debate on that with a couple of psychologists the other day. And they, they proved their point. I proved my point, put it to you that way. You know what About I mean? perfection? Both, yeah, on the idea of perfection and what that means to mankind and society. If it wasn't true, they were saying, then we wouldn't have society at the heights we're having. But I okay. said, but perfection is nothing more than perception. So I'm talking more so of the journey. The journey is repetition. Even in Egypt, they had several different types of, how would you say, pyramids that were made before they got to the, the main three that we all go to. Right. That being said, repetition is true to do things multiple times to get to that idea of perfection is what's really more important than the idea of perfection because mm -hmm. perfection is perception. All these high, big time, double PhD having and everything else, 
we beat them up with that because they don't look at the average everyday movement, the feet on the ground idea. Every human being, and even including them, I proved it with them, you learn through repetition. Everybody does. Perfection is a lie. It's the repetition idea that gets you to the perception of perfection. You know, you can, you can look at any, any of your favorite boxers or favorite athletes and look at them earlier on. And you see them earlier on in their career, raw, you know, untainted, and you know what I mean, had these raw movements. Then all of a sudden, you see a certain elegance start to happen because they're confident in these movements and their body can move, whatever it is. Well, wouldn't you say that's repetition from doing a certain thing over and over again to where it's looking like it's perfected? That's why I say perfection is a perception. You perceive it. You perceive perfection. Nature does things, several things. I went all the way in on them. I even went to Genesis. You know, God, you know, if you look, God made man a couple of times, two times supposedly, or three. But if you look in Genesis, you see two. They got quiet on that matter because, you know, they had somebody on Google and read it off in the, in the live stream. They said, yeah, he's, he's telling the truth or he's observing because I like to tell people, I'm not smart and all of that. I'm just observing. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be observant than book smart, to be honest with you. Because observe observation to get you here. Mm -hmm. It's looking at natural phenomenon and you trying to match it. Well, isn't that what earlier man and woman did? Mm -hmm. To be able to get us to this point. We're overly consumed with this idea of perfection which impedes the process on a lot of people just doing things. Because you'll spike yourself out from doing something. So that's what I had to do with the kids in the room. You know, because I'm a guy. I'm six foot four and a half, uh, 280, 275 on a good day. <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> oh, you're so and, funny. Yeah, some of the kids, they came in a room and my voice is husky. So even the parent was like, oh, wow, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I'm loud, too. And the kid's looking, but by the end of the class, I got them loud, too. Come on, let's go. What else we doing? Come mm -hmm. on now. Let's, come on. Now. We're not in school. You don't have to. I let them have a creative fart. And, oh, the kids love that idea. When I use that, let your art be like a fart. Just let it come out. Oh, all huh? of them laugh. Right. <laughs> love stuff like, like that. Back to it, uh, Joe. Yeah, but they really understood it, and then when they when I when I said it a couple of times, now their artwork just went crazy. It went out the window. It went that's in, in doing comic books. That's what you want. That's the only one where your imagination can really go crazy doing comic books. If mm -hmm. if I wasn't able to do comic books when I was younger, I would have went. I, I would have been even worse. But because I can do comic books in your own world and you can make up characters and you can take the people that you think is evil or mad or evil with you, right, and put them and make them evil characters like how I used to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all types of things to do. So, yeah. Yes? Look at this in here, everybody. Where the foot is hitting the ground, right? There's a dark area that you can take advantage of right underneath. And what I would do, I would use the left or right motion at that time. See what I'm doing? And mm -hmm. what? And if you left the right motion underneath there, underneath those marks you made, it's going to make it feel like that paw is really touching the ground. Now I put some of the stuff underneath of it to show the shadow here. And then now I come back with the torch killing it. And then I, now I do a little tortilla in, but I use the small side, Miss Paulette, you see? And uh, then we go left or right. Left, say again? Is that his foot underneath that? Like I see part, like his ball. That's his foot okay. right there. Where I'm, I'm at right now, you see where I'm at? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I'm that's right there. Part. All right, now, this part right here, that's the part that's on the other side that he's leaning on. Like that one. Okay. Yeah, it's from here, right? That's his other part. 
me. This one right here is underneath. Yeah. If you look at the photo, you can see it. If you okay. look straight across from his knee, you'll see where that paw is underneath in that shadow area. And then okay. this one has more of the light on it. That's why it's going to seem like it's coming more forward. Okay. You see? And then now you take the tortillion and you get us to believe that of the ground by going left to right in that shadow you just made, stretching it out on the surface. See what we did, Nadine? Mm -hmm. It gradually mimics the idea of the shadow in the picture, but notice I pulled it out of context just like we did at the sitting on. You see, we're not doing that terry cloth. We're just doing a ground, a ground. But I'm using the shadow idea from the terry cloth to make us make us believe that Richard is more solid and sitting on the ground more. You see? If you notice, he's mostly up off the ground in this area here until you get about right here on the back of that arm. So if we look at the photograph, you can see that, you guys. You see it, everybody else out there. There's no shadow in that area, see? So the minute that we don't see a real shadow in that area or it's real dull like we've seen, then we know that the, this part this of the body is from this point here coming forward. And that can re-enhance those movements there with that left to right movement too as well. As soon as you do the left to right motion, it makes it feel like it's more solid, touching and connecting with the ground. Where it's at its darkest point is where two items come together. And if you look on the photograph, you can see wherever his body is touching, there's a dark line there. You see that, everybody? You want to mimic that type of observation. That's why you got to people who are more expressive. And people really enjoy my pieces because I, I, I like to be expressive. And I found that being expressive, if you're more observant, that lends into the expressive idea. You may not know things in all the terms, but you know what? You know what you're seeing. You see, you may not know all the terms and everything else, but you know what you're feeling with that material underneath your fingers. So how could you deny that because you didn't read it as a term? Why? So it's not that I'm against the idea of perfection. Let's put it in the proper place. Let's put it in this. It's the end road. Repetition is everything. Perfection is the end road. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. go with that. Yeah, I'm going with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with that one, they do. <laughs> yeah. Because I see how, the, see, a lot of times I get to practice it on people. So the people that I'm practicing on is, and the little ones is like, you know, like, you, you know, that's a lot of times that's what they do to get theorems and things to get. So, you know what I mean? If I want to get my idea right and together, I got to practice it in an arena. This is another one of these that we practice this in. Does it work to have a group? Could everybody use this for work? all draw at the same time. I think we can. We just got to work through certain ideas with people of perfection. Because nobody wants to show their house. Nobody wants to show their environment if it's not in this so-called perfectionist idea. The other one is, is that it shows the socioeconomic. I had one person that wanted to put green screen and filters on everything when I talked to them about their work. And I said, Yo, well, why do you want to do green screen on because I don't want you to see my environment. Well, I'm not worried about your environment. I'm worried about the artwork that you're doing. I don't care what you live in. As long as you're safe and important than me, putting you in a socioeconomic situation just because I saw a crack in the wall. So, you know, we have to deal with all these different things. So, that's another reason why I think a lot of people don't participate, Nadine, because they may be in a certain way about their environment and where they may be. You know what I mean? That yeah. you know, I don't want to show that to everybody. But, you know, if you haven't noticed everybody, we don't really concern ourselves with that. Mm -hmm. 
We're worried about the artwork supposedly are doing with us when we're all doing it together from 10 to about 12, 15, 12 o'clock. That's our main mission. Probably the, the relaxed release and just do and have fun. Just let it go. You know, you gotta have things to stress you during your day, during your week, during your month. Why not have two hours on the all on, all we're asking you for is two hours on the end of the week, or some of us look at Sunday as the beginning. So begin your week with us for just two hours. Even if you're just living, like some of you go to church, like we have Sue Ann, she goes to church. So we haven't seen her in a while, but every now and then she'll drop in, you know. Mm -hmm. She'll hit us up and say likes and dislikes. So hit us up, everybody, if you watch the video and you're enjoying that aspect. Even if you don't, if you don't show your artwork, just show your appreciation by hitting us up and liking things. Now, some of it's going to be private. Some of it may be public. But if you're subscribed and you're part of the 175, we want to 183. See oh, 183. We don't stepped up again, everybody. Yeah. 83 of us, everybody. Look at that. Come on, you guys. You know, so participate in that way. You know what I mean? And let's just keep having fun. Perfection is a law. Repetition, obviously, is the truth. If you look at some of Miss Paulette's artwork that she's been posting, you can definitely see where she's advanced her, her skills and her mm -hmm. observations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. If you look at some of them, you can see the difference from the ones we did last year and the ones we did up to this year. You can see the difference in those that are willing to show their artwork. And mm -hmm. that's what we're striving for. We're not striving to say, oh, we're right. And we got all the answers for you to be. No, we're not like that. We're over here, Nadine and I are over here saying to you guys, hey, let's have a creative part together. Let's funk the place up. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, let's stink it up. Right? Let's stink it up. So that they know that somebody creative is there. You know, without, and the only thing that we're using the computer for is to connect. Mm -hmm. To get it. We're not using the computer to say, computer, help me draw this. No. We're saying, computer, stand on the side, just record our flow, and let us go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let us do our thing. That's it. You know, out of our way, man. Just let us do our thing as human beings do, man. Let us, ex let us express ourselves the way we're supposed to. You know, and then once you do that, look at the beautiful things we can do. We got Richard on there, you see? So now you want to do the same type of movements again. You're going to be just be very, uh, how would you say, repetitious with movement now, with your gestural movement. It's suggestive, but they call it gestural because it's a lot of different types of to make you believe a certain area. So if you look at the photograph, this part is in focus right here. You can see this dark in front of the tail. So what I would do, I would get in there and use my marks and move in that way that I already suggested, you see, and work in between those lights that we made. You see? So then now we can go up into the tail and do like how we did with the foot. So now we show the direction of the fur is going towards the end of the tail now. All of it's going, curving towards the end of the tail, see? And I would expand it just a little bit. You see, if, if you look at the photograph, the tip of the tail is doing this because the fur is curling out of the tip of the tail, you see? And now you do it on the side and you do the same thing with your eraser. Remember everybody, you come in with that eraser. Now we don't have to show his anal canal because we don't see that, but the fur is <laughs> suggesting. Yeah. <laughs> where that area is because you can see where the fur is coming going up and then separating down from there obviously that's where the anal canal is and we don't have to emphasize that we don't see that side of butcher you see so we see this tail there now you come back with your eraser the same way i'm going to use the same pencil to show you that you can use the pencil off your working pencils or pencils that you get from different companies and things like how i said I'm a graduate of Burlington County College before it became Burlington County Rowan College. And I was able to get all these pencils because I was in a design department and everything. So being an 
it, you get that in there. Then plus, you know some of the janitorial crew. You know what I mean? And you know some of the other people. Like how, uh, uh, whatchamacallit works there, Josh works in uh, Burlington County College. Oh, cool. Yeah, my art assistant did. So a lot of times I get a lot of things that way because they may throw out things, but they're changing over their system. So he'd be like, yo, I know you nostalgia freak for your school. Yo, man, I found some old stuff in the basement that they're throwing away. You want it? Oh, yeah, bring it. You know I don't have enough space already. Yo, it's a going job. I have done. It's good. Now you come back Reinforce, reinforce, you see, reinforce. Reinforce some of those light that you made in there and then work the darker area in the middle of the tent. Now, if you work that darker area towards this edge and the middle of this round, a little bit of light area there. And that's how you're gonna pull out how to believe that it's round, you see? And you're using the same local, so no, don't overly do yourself crazy, Nadine, on trying to be uh, uh, exact to that edge, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not what you want. You see how I did? So it's yeah. going to be like a bunch of dash marks and equal marks, if you want to say everybody turned vertically. And then now you come back with the tortilla, Miss Paulette, the same way, and you distort those, or you make some more shaded areas that make it seem like that fur is even more. But don't do it all over. Let some of the white come through. That white come through. Work in between there, everybody. And the minute that you do it, you're gonna have that idea that it's gonna feel like it's round, or it's gonna feel close to the idea of what's happening, what's happening optically to you. So the minute that somebody looks, all these marks are going to be to them like the dog is really there. You know? And that's why you're an illusionist. That's why you're a magician. Mainly an illusionist, I would say. Because it's a flat paper and you're, and you're manipulating material to make us believe something has or depth or thickness. And the moment see it yourself, you know you've gotten there. You, you hit that mark. Because always remember, everybody, you are the smaller uh, ramification of the larger picture. So that means that if you do a drawing of Richard, like how we're doing, or even like of Rambo, if you go back to Rambo, the cat that we did, Miss Paulette, Miss Paulette's feline. You see? Or you can look and say, okay, uh, what marks did I do to make you believe that it's a dog there, like canine movements? And then if you can look at that and feel like this area is really feeling like a dog to you, then you know over 50% of the people that look, even if they're online, they're going to agree with you. Isn't that what you're working towards? You're working towards you feeling like you, you're, you were what we call successful in relaying this idea that and then when it's shown that you want those, that mark there, this, this marks that we made here, we want mm -hmm. them to be able to look at, yeah, that's a dog's eye. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, if they know Richard and know Nadine, and they look at your piece and say, oh, that's Richard, that's Nadine's dog. Oh, my God. Be overjoyed then. Mm -hmm. Be overjoyed because all that hard work you put in, you really made somebody believe that Richard was there. And that's the key. That's the way you do it, everybody. Don't concern yourself with certain aspects of, how would you say, gentleness. Uh, how would you say, attitudes of, how would you say, uh, superior and inferior eye. When somebody goes for listen what they said. If they said, oh, that's a dog. But what type of dog is that? Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad at all. Because they said dog. Mm -hmm. Now I'll slide out the screen like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, you gotta have fun with it, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Body. 
you have one. Don't just listen to what they dislike. Listen to what they said totally. And the minute that they admit that what's on the surface is on the surface. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's all we got to say over here. Because we're pretty much done with Richard now. He's there. Could you do a little bit more, a little bit less? Could I do a little bit more? I could, but it's all within the same idea of what we've been talking about for Richard, is that whatever mark you do for Richard's fur in the front here, you're going to have to replicate that and look at the direction of fur for any mammal, even you. All the fur, the hair is going to go away from the nose, always. Oh, what happens to it after you come out the womb, that's different. But when you're coming out the womb, everything that comes out of a womb, the fur goes away from the nose, all the way down and back and around the anal canal and out. That's the way the fur works. Down the legs, off the tip of the toes, off the tip of the finger, down and away from the face, away from the mouth, away from the nose. Even if you look at the caveman things that they have in the, in the uh, museums and stuff, and you look at those uh, uh, those museum uh, uh, things there, you can see where they have an understanding because even with that earlier Paleolithic man, when they show all the fur on his body and everything, if you notice, it's going away from the face, away from the nose. None of the hair is moving, the follicles are moving this way. Like, like my beard hair is not moving this way. It's moving down and away from the mouth. The mustache down and away from the nose, eyebrows and away from the nose, the hair moving back from the hairline, back and away. Now, once you come out of the wound, that's different. But all the hair, once again, everybody, everything that's mammalian, all the mammalian kingdoms work this way. Doesn't matter who you are, what it is. If it's breathing air and it's a mammal, all the hair follicles away from the, in the eye. Down and away, always. Okay. And if you can remember that, anything that you're drawing that has life like that, you can pretty much replicate, have an understanding of what's going on. You see, this ear is in front of his back. So I just want to make sure that it feels that way by just putting a little edge there, working within the fur lines that I made all over. And the minute that you do it, you see it starts to take on that feeling. Now, this part seems like it's in front of his back. To over to, to overemphasize it, I take that eraser again. And notice I have a couple of pencils here that I use for that back end. You want to, you know, especially if you got them free. Like the banks used to give pencils. Now everybody's giving pins now. So, you know, they're not giving pencils. Now. But if you go to like some of the um, construction place, places like paints and things like that, every now and then they give away pencils because some of the contractors need pencils to make marks on the floor and things like that. So I got a couple of those pencils too from contractors. And they're a little bit thick, but they're, they, they, you get a lot more pencil for free. So if you ever get a pencil from a contract company, you want to give them free, you want as many as you can get. <laughs> I'm being honest I got a big old gigantic bag back here if I went into my bins and pull out the bags that I got I'll be like wow you really are a hoarder yes if I pan this studio you guys would be like Don where do you walk at in there man that's a large space and, and you got stuff everywhere how are you working in there I've always worked in chaos like this guys. I've always had things everywhere even in my room, it wouldn't be all over my room. It'd be all over my corner where my little art studio was when I was younger, and then so on and so forth. So I don't want you to think my living situation is chaotic. No, <laughs> I, just, I just want you to understand that I believe your workspace can be a, a functional chaotic place, whereas you just jump in and just something just happens. That's just all the ways I body. So. I've tried to change it, everybody. <laughs> Lord knows I have. You can ask people that may know me. They say, yeah, he's tried, but 
it only works best when he has it all in that chaotic junk type of way, but his organization was in chaos. So you may look at it as a mess, but I'm looking over there and say, oh, okay, well, there go my pencils, there go certain rags that I use. So okay. <laughs> don't front all of you guys want to. I know Miss Paulette does it. Oh, Nadine, you can't tell me you don't. <laughs> I, I'm not even saying anything. <laughs> Like, Don, don't pull me into this. You know, that's you telling all that, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he didn't say a thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hey, everybody, if you're feeling good and you think you're done, normally what I do is I'll find some place to sign. And a lot of times I'm, I'm signing right here in the lower right hand corner. I don't put dates because I like. Build time this everybody. You can put dates if you choose to. Sometimes if I do put a date, I put it as a bonus on the back side and put some type of note of how I was feeling when I did. A lot of times if you're into selling the artwork and making your own brand, that's what a lot of times people look for. I've noticed when you look at the antiquing road, uh, road shows and things like that, they'll turn the piece around to see if there's any special notations on it. And you should see how you see how people react when they have a from the artist on the back that was unknowing. So when I saw that, I was like, wow, well, I don't know if people will ever collect my work one day, but that would be cool to put notes on the back for people to just bump into and see the time frame on the back rather than on the front. Because mm -hmm. I just believe if I put 23 on there with the little dash, now they're, they're going to be prejudging me based upon time frame. Mm -hmm. You see, rather than just letting it be, this is a moment with Richard, whether I was there with Richard or not. I had a moment with Richard DeGree. Thanks for sharing Richard with us, Nate. Hey, no problem. Yeah. yeah. I was fun drawing them. I was like, oh my goodness, I need to. Uh, I went and bought some art supplies. Now I want to ask Don, Don, where do you get that white chalk from? I have two different types of chalk, and it's not. Like working like yours, like where it's actually highlighted, you know, so the fur don't, um, you know, so my okay. Well, Miss Paulette, I'm gonna pull one or two and read them off to you. What the, what brands they are? Okay, I had I had two different brands that I was using for when we talk about the white chalk pencils. Yeah. One is Generals Generals Company Charcoal White, and the number of that particular one that they have is. Five five eight. Five five. So it's charcoal white, it's charcoal okay. white generals, charcoal white number five five eight. Then okay. another company that I have, huh? Oh, that's okay. Now this other company is a specialty that's at, that's in um a store up here called Artisans and Crafters. You may be able to find these in the art stores down around you if you have a dick blick or something like that down you. One is near, it's from a company in Austria. And okay. they call it White Chalk Wissick Reed. I'm terrible on that. We have a nomenclature for number one or I, which is from Austria. So I would go with the general if I was you because it's closer to the white chalkboard chalk I use when I use those. The, when you see this chalk here that I'm using, uh -huh. that's that old white chalk that you can get, Crayola. Yeah. A box to their white, not the one for the floor now, the one for the chalkboard. Okay, because I, I got some right here, but it, it's, ooh, can't see it. But it's flat, you know, uh, as far as, you know, it don't, present itself like it's bright as yours. And then I got this charcoal pencil right here, white charcoal pencil, but it, it's still kind of hard, you know, so it's still on. So that, that's why you gotta have the sandpaper, Miss Paulette. You use the sandpaper to break the wax that's in there. See, the way the pencils are made is a little bit of a wax or gum, what they call gum Arabic in there to keep it solid and solidified. And then sometimes what happens is, is that that chalk doesn't break down very well on certain surfaces. A lot of times it breaks down better on the uh, rougher surface than the smooth surface. So the 
way to get it to break off is to use the sandpaper okay. and to break it down that way. And then you'll be able to use it like how I'm, because that's what I'm doing on my end. I'm okay. using, go to the dollar store and get this sandpaper right here, all that. Okay. I got something that's kind of harder than P sixty. Sixty. That means that's the grade of how much sand per inch is on this. Okay. So okay. some of you have a grit a little bit more than that. That means it's finer. So the higher the number, a lot of times the the, the more fine the sandpaper is. You want the finest sandpaper or semi coarse paper, which will be like a sixty, sometimes eighty grade. Things like that will be good for you to use with your pencils to bring points back in your erasers. Because you don't want to use the rougher ones. The rougher ones is going to make you exasperate your materials more. Okay. You see? But you want finer grade so it doesn't really rip into your materials and break it down that much. You just okay. wanted to break the, the layer of the material, Ms. Paulette, okay? Okay. All okay. right. Well. You can put a tortillion and an electric sharpener would be better if you wanted to uh, bring the tip back uh -huh. to your uh, tortilla. What you can do is you can put, I would use an electric sharpener before I use a hand. So you can put that pencil in the, the sharpener and, I mean, uh, that paper tortilla in the sharpener and you'll get a nice back on it. Okay. Okay. And that's the way it work. I do the same thing here. The, the tortillion and put it through the sharpener. And boom, I'm able to use it again and let it get dirty until the tip wears down again. So that's why I work on the tortillion. Okay. And what about that? I'll show that to you as well. Hold on. When we talk about working on the dot, I mean, this side here, the sides here, Ms. Paulette, Nadine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see how my, I've had these for a couple of years, and you see how my tip is still there. Because mm -hmm. I uh -huh. use the sides of it. That's why you see the sides of it is all black. Not this area here where my thumb is, right from where the tip of my thumb is up to the tip of the, the apparatus. You see, it's all uh -huh. evenly done. That's what I'm using. Oh. You see, so now when I go up into like up into like Richard's eyes and stuff, you see how this point from you see how that point fits right in that area. Mm -hmm. That's why you put on your tortillion. Oh, okay. point, and it really works for you even more, and you can really get a lot of you know usage out of it. You see, oh. now I'm looking at my piece. Uh, it, it, the only other thing I would do to my piece is see this area over here, ladies, behind mm -hmm. Richard. I would mm -hmm. put a little bit more of a darkness there, so then this way we can see more of Richard. Those those eraser marks are, are come out more if I put a little bit more tone back here in this area right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'll do real quick is just put that in real quick while we're talking, ladies, because we're pretty much done. This is a done deal, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody online. Today, we're done with Richard. I'm happy with the way Richard looks with me. I got him. Never even met Richard. I just met him with a camera when he jumped in every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Just like we, that, that's how we met um, um, Rambo, remember? Right. Rambo would, would, would pop in. In front of all that piece. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, boy. She was like, he was on today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You see how I just did that real quick? I used the side of the pencil, everybody. You see? Mm -hmm. See what mark is, Nadine? Mm -hmm. That's how you know I was using the side of the pencil to put that tone in. Mm -hmm. See? And now mm -hmm. I will come back with the paper towel. Or you can have that Sammy, that K-Moss claw. Mm -hmm. You know, C-A-K-M-O-S, K-Moss claw. It feels like a piece of skin. 
<laughs> almost like leather, almost suede leather. Yeah. But you can go to the uh, now you can go to the dollar store and, and go to the automotive department to mm -hmm. get that. Yeah, you can you can do that. What happens is in the automotive department, that's what they use to shine and buff cars with. Mm -hmm. So you want to get that same microfiber cloth, what they call a chamois, right? For shining a car and, and drying off a car, you mm -hmm. want to get you can cut it in the cubes. And then now you have a a, a, a K-Moss cloth or a chamois for smudging all the time. Because that's, that's what I used to do when I was in school to cheat the cost. Mm -hmm. And then I used to do that with a group of friends. We would just buy a bunch of that material now, that microfiber material, go to a fabric store then and buy a big piece of it and then cut it all up. And then we all had a piece to use. Mm -hmm. And that makes it cheaper. So now you see what I'm talking about? See how it, I brought the tone down over here and see how now that light area wants to come forward more? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we want to do for everybody. So then try to remember that. A lot of times is, Ms. Paulette, you won't, it, the reason why it seems like that talk is more intense when I use it sometimes because I'm using this idea that I'm talking about. I may surround that light area with a dark area that's going to force your eye to believe that that's brighter than what it is. Okay. Yeah, these are all effects. Like, if you have this hole here, these whites would be bright and have this darkness here. here. If oh, you, saw, okay. you can see none of these, these movements I made until I put a little bit more darkness around here, now that forces the eye to perceive it as being brighter than what it is. Okay. And then in any dark stuff in here, they're going to get dark because it's going to be associating optically with this area. Okay. So that's, that's really the trick or the it's called the understanding that if I want something to seem brighter, I make put my half tones around that area to make certain areas seem brighter than what they are. And that's the supposed trick or, or, or whatever you want to call it that point. So that's absolutely what we want to work with and have an understanding of. Because you can see also with Michelangelo, Vinci, all those people that really love to rant and rate about them, the same things that we're doing here because we're paying ode to the artists that came before us all the way back down, all the way into Europe. I don't separate it all the way through Europe, all the way to North Africa and, and beyond because all this information was known. Some people say, well, how can you say that? I say, well, think about it. How, who made two uh, sarcophagus? Mm -hmm. How did they, how did they the point where they understood the mathematics or the proportion or the symmetry of the human form. Mm. You know, and then uh, look at it, how do they know to extract that out of a rock, put it in another situation, solidify it, and put colors on top of it? You gotta really mm. look at that. Mm -hmm. I had that debate with people that say that, you know, People during those eras were, you know what I mean? They, they weren't really intellectually sound. And I argued, I was like, nah, man, well, you can go to ancient Samaria, you can go to uh, down to Peru and or go to South America, and you can see the Aztecs and Teotihuacan. That's just one of the pyramids over there. And you can look at it and see, wait a minute, they need certain things about the human body that we're not willing to say to you. Because yeah. if you look at the world, they understood all it. They may not have used it the way that we're using it, but they do that in even more. So no, this information has been around for a long time. I believe it's based on observation because we as human beings, we wouldn't be able to do those same things like how we did so wonderfully now together as a group. It's only three of us right now showing ours. If you look at all three uh, aspects, you'll see observation wins. Mm -hmm. Observation wins all the time. 
Wrap it up. It's 12 o'clock. Yay! Wonderful job, everybody. Wonderful job. Wonderful job, Miss Paulette. Thank you. That was fun. Well, very educational, informative, and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, went over, you know, when I was you know, talking, fixing up some things on it because I had new material. Uh, mm -hmm. Trying to get it though, I still haven't gotten that perfect. Got that little foot that hit, and you know, trying to make that mimic that fur, you know, curliness of his fur, and the little marks. And, Trying to emphasize his eyes and you know uh, the fur going out from the corner of his eyes. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Miss Paulette, um, it definitely looks like Richard. <laughs> yeah, I just like wow. I was like, I'm like, let me see. Huh? Yeah, you, I'm, yeah, you call it. You got, you got me clean still. Uh, uh, um. Nadine. Yeah, I'm still pinned. You're still pinned? Sorry. Sorry about yeah. that. Okay. Better? All right, now I can see if Miss Paulette, I can see it now if you put it up. Yeah, yeah, that's all I want to say is just work with the fur, your fur mark. Make up a, a, a curly mark that you're going to do with the fur. You got all the stuff there, Miss Paul, that he's there. There you go. Go. Rambo. Oh, Rambo. There he is. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you got him. You got him. Now, like how you saying, just work on your fur idea. Yeah. That's all. And then you got him. Yeah. yeah. I told you, Miss Paulette, you're going to be doing more than what you thought you can do, man. I told you. I can't see that book when you get started, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I got that. Yeah. Uh, you out, Nadine. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? What's up? Hey, I woke him up. He was not happy. I see yours, baby. This is Shake. Uh, Richard. This, this is the one he a uh, Richard is when he was shaved, right? Like a uh, yeah. I had to trim him down. He was getting too thick. Here, come here, Richard. Take his sweater off. Looks like him though. You got him, Nadine. You got him. You got you yours. I can't have the white chalk on yours. Okay. Look at Oh, look at this. Oh, man. Yeah. Look at this guy. So you say saying work, work the white chalk in? Yeah, just a little bit at a time. Just touching it in the light area. You see what's happening? Yeah. So okay. in some of the air, get it all the way in. Okay. All right. He said, I want to see my. I woke him up. Look at he is not happy. But you see how that light went in? Huh? See his way Yeah. That's what see you want in there when you use the chalk a little bit. Don't worry about making his fur white. Just act like it's the white. Light coming across the sink, it'll work okay, better use for you. The chalk for the light, that's okay. it. Yeah, right. a couple right. of marks. How you do with, with the with, with it over his eye? Okay, yeah, because yeah, there's still right in here. Yeah, you know, so. but don't think over the graphite, you won't go over the graphite. You're working inside the eraser mark areas now. Okay, there you you see what I'm saying? Yes. Got it. It's just a couple here and there. You don't have to put a lot. Just a couple here and there. All and right. you'll see. All right? Mm-hmm. 
Way to go. We got Richard. Everybody got Richard. So way to go, everybody. Yay, Richard. Yay. Yay. Oh, oh, look. 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 Oh, wait. That- yeah, where did, what was the name of the sheets again? These are clear sheets. Like clear UV or tint sheets, you see? Uh-huh. The place okay. that you can get to is called clearbags.com. Clear bags? Yes, clear bags, C-L-E-A-R-B-A-T-S.com. Okay. It's a company that's in North Jersey, I believe, and they have other franchises throughout the, the country, but they send you clear bags like this for your artwork and different things like that, you see? And then uh, it has, it's a resealable bag, so it has that plastic on the top, you see? Of a, oh, okay. Of a tape on the top. So I close this off once I put it in there, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> To show you, I'm gonna take this other one that I got here. This is another one that I got. So I'm gonna take this one, put it in the plastic so you can see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so while Don's doing that, uh, here while Don's doing that, here's the website. Clear Clearbags.com. Yep. Okay. And they have 10% off right now. Yeah, they got oh, the many cool. sales, you guys. That's why I use that company a lot. They always have different sales. Okay. Now, also, it's bags for a lot of different things now. You can get bags for your books when you get them. You yep. can get bags for anything. You see the package bags that they have there. Yeah. So you, A through Z, if you need a bag for anything, you can get it there. What right. I use mine for how I just did here, you see? Hold off. Oh, no, 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 no problem. Wait a minute. But that's the web. Okay. Everybody. That's the now show goes. it again. Okay, nice. Oh, flip that around. That looks good, Don. I like mm-hmm. this one. Yeah. What's that? That was another live one I did, but I wanted to show you how it's in the plastic manila. Okay. So now that uh-huh. plastic is effective, you see? Mm-hmm. And now I can take it and show it different places if I want. I've taped these up on the wall when I've gone places to show the artwork, mm-hmm. to show what we do in our classes. And then I sell them, too. So I said, right. yeah, I've had people ask when I've shown them out places. People are like, oh, are those for sale or are those just for instruction? Mm-hmm. I said, no, the instruction are down. down. You can have it. If you have it. Mm-hmm. That's how that works. And then you can put them in France with 18 by 24. So then what you can do if you're 18 by 24 or eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17, those mm-hmm. are the canvas size. You can find frames and bags easily. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm an advocate of those sizes. Now, if you go outside those sizes, can you get bags for that? Yes. If you go to that website, you're going to see that they got various size bags. Mm-hmm. They have size bags that they can make for you too as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, you can have a custom bag, which is going to cost you a little bit more. It's just going to cost a little bit more to have a custom bag, everybody. You know, so that's one of the companies I use to get bags. You can put in a search for that, and then other to come up. Mm-hmm. So that's the, that's one of the ones that use that makes it easier. You can open an account there and you can just reorder the same bags over and over again. They give discounts and all of that, like how you saw on the screen. Thanks for that, Nadine. Yeah, no worries. Mm-hmm. So so they know when they they know what the site looks like. So they yeah. can confirm that. Yes. Awesome. Yep, I've been using them for years. And, and that plastic is UV tinted, so it protects from the sunlight. 
-hmm. If you close it up, it helps with the moisture. You keep moisture away from your drawings that you might want to keep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, well, we love to give little tidbits like that. I so appreciate Don for sharing the, sharing this, yep. you know, because that's a way you can preserve your work. You could preserve photos. You could preserve a whole bunch of things, stamps, yep. um, other documents. Magazines. Mag magazines, if you collect magazines or stuff like that. So, yeah. Have that you may still have some people in our age group may still have Polaroids and stuff from back in the day. Buy yeah. some of these Jones and you can protect them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. all the way down to like you know, postcard size too. They have postcard size bags you can buy too. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Don, when we put that in there, do do we need to cover uh, or coat the uh, the paper with anything before we do that? No, you don't have to, but the, the most that you could do is use the workable fixative idea that we talked about earlier on, whether it be the hairspray or the actual Crylon workable uh, fixative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. The cheapest one to go with is the hairspray, you know, just for hair, alphabet, stuff like that. That's going to help to keep that on the surface. So the bag won't smear around in the bag a whole bunch if you move it around a lot. Mm -hmm. But you put the bag on it, it still mm -hmm. hold up. That's what, I, that's what I do. So some like the last one I just put in the bag now in front of you guys, I didn't mm -hmm. spray that one. But okay. I didn't, I didn't put a lot of material on the surface. Okay. So a lot of times with the charcoal and the white chalk, that's where the problem is because if you spray the white chalk, all the white goes down now. The blue and the white want to go down, and you're going to have to put more on the surface to bring it back. Mm -hmm. Same thing with pastel. I myself, I don't spray the ones with the white chalk or pastel. Chalk. Okay. I only, I only the um, uh, pencils, like charcoal by itself, not charcoal not with the white chalk by itself, and we good. Okay. CPM, you can do it with, you can spray with sepia. That's different. That's a wax. Now you okay. can spray. It. Okay. You see, but if we're not using the white sepia crown. And using white chalk, then I wouldn't spray. Okay. And see, one more. Two types you can use. You have the product workable fixative that we get from the art store. And then you have where you can go to the dollar store, Walmart, or any supermarket and get like Aquanet, uh, just for hair, with metal, not an oil, a hair spray. Mm -hmm. And not a mousse. And not a spritz, a hair spray. Got it. These are definitely helpful tip, tidbits for, for budding artists, uh, novices, mavericks, whatever. Don, he's, he's dropping the knowledge. Don, thank you so much. Yeah. We do appreciate all that you bring. Yep, we knock it out of the ballpark. I mean, it's all about you know, farting out some art. <laughs> there you go. That's it. There, there you go. Yeah, I love that baby. You just made my day say something like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. It is that time. We hope to see you again next week. Um, it's been a great time. Happy New Year for all the Asian folks that celebrate the lunar uh, calendar. Uh, the year of the rabbit, I believe. So everyone yes. enjoy yourself. Thank you, Miss Paulette, for joining us live. We much appreciate you and all that you do to support this journey of inspiring others to do what, Don? Keep creating. Keep creating. Yes. <laughs> Keep creating, everybody. Keep creating. All righty. Thanks, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, and don't forget, leave your comments. In